few movie vehicles are as iconic and well-loved as the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. But despite its cool factor, how does it actually work? How can such a small nuclear reactor produce 1.21 gigawatts? Why are there flame trails left behind once the car jumps through time? And how does the flux capacitor open the portal through time? Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. 1.21 gigawatts, that is the power required to achieve time travel, but thinking that a micronuclear reactor can deliver that much energy in an instant is silly. The DeLorean nuclear reactor is just like any other reactor. You have the reactor core, steam turbines connected to generators, and a coolant system designed to freeze the core in an emergency using liquid freon, confined in three green pontoon accumulator tubes located on the left side of the vehicle. Perhaps the coolest and most iconic part of the exterior of the car is the reactor cooling vents, which serves the same purpose as cooling towers in nuclear power plants. These vents contain heat exchangers and condensers to maximize cooling efficiency under normal circumstances. If things fall out of line, liquid freon can be directly injected into the reactor causing instant condensation while building up pressure that the system must purge through the vents. But the problem isn't really generating that amount of power in a limited amount of time. Think of it this way. A watt is defined as one joule per second, so a battery that holds one joule of energy technically could deliver a gigawatt for a nanosecond. As a matter of fact, any car battery can deliver the 1.21 gigawatts if the discharge happens in hundreds of a second. Of course, no battery can do that. Capacitors, on the other hand, can do that and much more. Question now is, how long does the discharge needs to be to keep the wormhole open? Unfortunately, nowhere in the trilogy that number is given, but we have a very good reference to base ourselves on at the end of the first movie. A bolt of lightning can deliver the required power for about 0.2 seconds. What this implies is that the car needs to travel at a speed to which its entire length can pass through the wormhole. Too slow, and only half of the car can pass through. Too fast, and the front of the car will disintegrate from touching the unopened, highly charged temporal field. The DeLorean length is 4.3 meters. Traveling at 88 miles per hour, or 39.3 meters per second, means that the car will travel 7.86 meters, which is more than enough for the DeLorean to pass through. The issue now is storing that energy to be released in 0.2 seconds. Gigawatt generators are way too big to fit in any car much less a DeLorean. But then again, the nuclear reactor does not need to produce 1.21 gigawatts. What we need instead is to store the energy into capacitors. Moreover, it's more of a question of charging time. From the time Doc inserts plutonium fuel into the reactor, all the way to when Marty travels in time, we have about 4 minutes. This implies that the nuclear reactor output is about 1 megawatt something that only a crazy genius would be able to achieve. Directly in front of the nuclear reactor is where the reactor coils are located. Two reactor coils comprised of 242 5 megawatt vacuum capacitors store 1.21 gigawatts to be delivered directly into the flux capacitor. But hold on, we're still not ready to travel through time yet, because we still need time particles. More precisely, tachyon. Theorized in 1962, tachyons are particles that travel faster than light. When properly focused and with the injection of 1.21 gigawatts, it creates a wormhole portal of the time continuum. All that starts with three particle accelerators that form the basis of a ternary system that is crucial to produce tachyons in the flux capacitor. Though these particle accelerators aren't as powerful as some of their counterparts, they accelerate particles to an ideal energy state. They are synchronized to the nanosecond so that the particles reach the collider blades of the flux capacitor at exactly the same time. 
And why is that? Because the flux capacitor is a particle collider that creates tachyons. What is known is that the flux capacitor is based on a ternary number system with three possible values, 0, 1, and 2. While two-dimensional collisions will only produce subatomic particles, a ternary system ignites the fourth dimension, creating tachyons in the process. As the flux capacitor begins to power up, tachyons are accumulated and amplified at the center of the reactor until a concentration that is high enough to open a rift in space-time is achieved. However, due to their speedy nature, they need to be actively contained within the boundary of the vehicle, which is the job of the flux bands, also known as field stabilizers. There are three flux bands around the vehicle, one in the front and two on the back. They are powered by the vehicle's engine, which is responsible for creating an electromagnetic bubble that protects everything inside and constrains tachyons. When the electromagnetic bubble reaches optimal levels, six flux boxes mounted at the ends of the flux bands containing temporal field ignition coils are fed excited tachyons, transforming the electromagnetic bubble into a temporal field. Friction between the temporal field and the fully charged flux bands is what causes the blue radiance from the flux bands and the flames on the tires. There is literally no room for error. The level of separation in between the tires and the ground is measured in microns. Tachyons produced by the flux capacitor are fed into the tachyon pulse generator, which fires the particles onto the electromagnetic field at an optimal distance near the front of the vehicle. Putting it all together, and what you are about to see is some serious shit. And if you're still having trouble figuring out how to build your own time machine because your knowledge of physics sucks, then Brilliant is the answer. From the ancient origins of math to the cutting-edge research of today, Brilliant offers a wide range of courses that will take you on a journey through space and time. Whether you're looking to advance your career, tackle a personal project, or just satisfy your curiosity, Brilliant has the tools and resources to help you succeed with over 60 courses and 20,000 plus practice problems. Starting is as easy as just choosing your interest, selecting which level you're most comfortable with. Newbie or expert, Brilliant takes care of the rest. Don't let time slip away. Get your 30-day trial at brilliant.org slash subject zero science today and the first 200 people to click on the link below get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So there you have it, the real deal behind the DeLorean time machine. It's not as simple as Doc made it out to be, but that doesn't make it any less amazing. This car is a classic for a reason. 
and we hope this video helped you appreciate it even more. Subject Zero, we're done here.